So this is the second set of questions on the acids, bases and pH topic. So the link to the questions is in the description of the video. Click on that, have a go at the questions and then play on for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. So first thing we've got to do is write the expression for Kw. Remember Kw stands for the ionic product of water. So Kw equals the H plus concentration multiplied by the OH minus concentration. Moving on to the calculation, we've got to calculate the hydroxide ion concentration in an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid with this pH and at that temperature. So you can see I've written up there at 25 degrees C, Kw has this value 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and there's the units there. So if we bring in the Kw expression, obviously we know the Kw value, that's it there. The H plus concentration is going to be 10 to the minus pH and that will help us get the OH minus concentration. So we just need to rearrange that, put the numbers in and out should pop the answer. So that gives this calculated value here, 2.34 times 10 to the minus 10, but be careful it wants it to two significant figures. So it's 2.3 times 10 to the minus 10. Part B now, we've got to use the graph to explain whether the dissociation of water is exothermic or endothermic. So there's the process there. Now from the graph, we can see that Kw is increasing with the temperature. So what that means is an increase in temperature is favoring the forward reaction because Kw is a measure of dissociation. So therefore, this forward reaction must be endothermic. Okay, so moving on to the next part, got to calculate the pH of pure water at body temperature. So I've just copied and pasted the graph um, for, say, me going backwards and forwards. Uh, yeah, it's a bit small, but hopefully you'll sort of be able to follow this. So 37 degrees C is about there. So that gives me a Kw value of around 2.4 times 10 to the minus 14. Obviously, in the exam, there will be a range allowed. So for this calculation, I'm going to use that value for Kw. Now, the fact that it's pure water is very, very important to you because what that means is the H plus concentration and the OH minus concentration are the same. So we can simplify the Kw expression to that, Kw equals the concentration of H plus squared. So because we want to find the pH of the water, we need the H plus concentration. So H plus concentration is the square root of Kw. So that's going to be the square root of my value, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 14, which gives an H plus concentration of 1.55 times 10 to the minus 7 moles per decimeter cubed. So all I need to do now is minus log that to get the pH. And to two decimal places, it's 6.81. The final part, what's the consequence of using Kw values at different temperatures in published work? You can see from the graph, Kw changes with temperature or varies with temperature. So that would make the published work invalid or inaccurate. So a practical skills question coming up now. So we've got to plan an experiment to determine the enthalpy change of neutralization. So I've written up the obviously the equation that accompanies that process and the definition for enthalpy change of neutralization, I would always get that into any answer like this. Got it written up there. The enthalpy change when an aqueous acid reacts with an aqueous alkali to form one mole of water. So I think the tricky part of a question like this is the fact that it's not a calculation where they've given you the data to just number crunch. You've got to sort of come up with some suitable data and then talk about how you would then process that to, um, to get the measure of the enthalpy change of neutralization. So it's not straightforward with this. I think this will be quite fe you know, feared by a lot of students. So I'll take you through it now. So the first thing I'm saying is measure out a known volume and concentration of aqueous acid, and my example is 50 cm cubed of 1 mole per decimeter cubed HCl. So if we look at the equation that's taking place, so obviously the HCl is providing the H plus ions, we want to take the same volume and concentration of aqueous alkali, obviously they're going to provide the OH minus ions, so that we're keeping the moles of these the same. So you can see I've written up there, we're going to use 50 cm cubed of 1 mole per decimeter cubed 
sodium hydroxide now. So you can, I'm sure you can picture them sitting in two separate beakers. What you do is allow some time for them to reach the same temperature. And then obviously you would measure the temperature of both. And that's going to give you your starting temperature for the experiment. So then you would mix them together in an ideally an insulated beaker and you'd fit it with the lid. So we're minimizing any heat loss here. You then give them some time to, and then measure the maximum temperature reached. So that will give you your final temperature. And then from that information, you can calculate the energy released by the reaction using the Q equals MC delta T equation. You can have a lowercase Q there if you want. So for the numbers I've provided, the M, the mass of the solution, is going to be 100 grams because it was 50 cm cubed of each. Now we're making an assumption here that the density of the solution is the same as water. The specific heat capacity of the solution is 4.18. Again, we're assuming it's the same as water. And the delta T, the temperature change, is obviously the maximum temperature reached minus that start temperature. And that's going to give you an energy value in joules. You then convert that energy value to kilojoules by obviously dividing by 1,000. And then to calculate the enthalpy change of neutralization, you'd need to scale up the um, kilojoules produced by the reaction, scale them up to what would have been produced for one mole of water. And the way you do that is minus Q in kilojoules. I'll explain the minus in a second. Minus Q in kilojoules divided by the moles of water formed in the reaction. So because we used um, 0 0.05 moles of acid and 0 0.05 moles of alkali, we're going to get 0 0.05 moles of water formed. The minus sign must be there because it's an exothermic reaction. Enthalpy change of neutralization is an exothermic process.